let's just get started. So, uh, it's been a little while since my last stream. I think I missed one stream because of medical problems. Because all of my medicals are all fucked up. Hi Lisa, hi Jules, hi everybody else. So today we're going to go diving into the most eye-straining part of this game. We're going to be diving down and curling through and coiling our way into the deepest, darkest places of the world, aside from the other deep, dark places of the world, and heading off to the Demon Ruins. This is a useful... Actually, no, it's not a useful bonfire, and I shall not bother to upgrade it at all. I just... there's no point. Um, so, that shell-looking thing over there, the bell, that uh, enormous stone entity, is actually at the dome across the top of Isolith, which is where we're heading, which was sealed off in some way at some point in some primordial time. This guy seems to be coming over here to say hi. These are one of the least threatening enemies of the game, although they are enemies and they will attack you. The ones at the top of the hill are just praying to what? We don't know, but... Um, Presumably the flame, actually, since they are infected in some way. And uh, they can spread their infection to you. They have a particular attack where a... Uh... Ah, he did... That, that one, specifically, in fact, where a little wormy thing pokes out. If that hits you, it can install a... Uh... I guess install is a weird word, but it can, it can put an egg in your body, which will slowly ripen and hatch over time. Uh, this affects your character in a few different ways. Um, I believe it affects your ability to run fast and stuff, but it also grants you an occasional bonus attack because the uh, the worm thing will also attack guys you're fighting occasionally. It'll just pop out and give them a little give them a little smooch, um, which means that they themselves will become infected. Except that they die from you fighting them constantly. I mean, uh, you know, parasitic infections are. A pretty common fetish in the like weird gross fetishes community um i don't see the appeal myself but it's definitely something that some people find appealing anyway they're easy to fight and a pain to kill because if you kill them they pop into a whole bunch of little worms that attack you and which we're fighting with a rapier we literally the hitbox on these attacks that's the only one that will hit them and it's really narrow in front of you there's no there's no like left to right effect really And, uh, yeah, so if you have pyromancy, there's no reason not to just explode them and they will die in the fire. But if you don't, then you're generally better off just leaving them since they can't even chase you very effectively. So this is a boss arena. This is one of the game's puzzle bosses. You can fight him normally, unlike most pu uh, puzzle bosses, but there is a uh, nice easy gimmick to make it um, possible to just, just beat him quickly. Uh, wait, where the fuck is... Oh, there he is. <laughs> You wouldn't think someone the size of a skyscraper with um, giant wiggly legs poking out and a constant, endless stream of lava pouring off their face would be hard to spot, but, you know, never underestimate my ability to miss the obvious. You good, buddy? We chill? We don't need to fight, do we? We're cool. So this guy is the Ceaseless Discharge. He is the one brother of the many sisters who were the flame sorceress, sorceresses who uh, became pyromancers and possibly birthed pyromancy after the uh, after their mother, the Witch of Isolith, fucked up her attempt to recreate the first flame and instead made bad stuff happen. All kinds of bad things happen when you try and break the laws of nature. So um, they all became assorted spider monsters, and he became this. He's called the Ceaseless Discharge because uh, lava pours out of him constantly, but he's not immune to fire, so he's con in constant pain from the fire damage he's taking constantly. This here is a corpse which will drop the uh, armor set worn by the two surviving non-mutated witches of Isolith, who can be ouch, uh, who can be found and fought in the game world, He's probably going to kill me because I went through the wrong ravine. So I can't be bothered to fight him properly, so I'm just going to do the easy trick version. Well, it's not... People call it a cheese or an exploit, but that's not actually the case. 
Um, it's a it's an intended programmed uh, way to beat this boss, which can be very difficult to fight and almost impossible to fight if you have certain uh, certain builds. So in order to make it fairer for people who do have those builds, they have included this me mechanism where if you sprint from where the boss fight starts to this doorway over here, um, instead of running through his pool of lava to chase you, the uh, ceaseless discharge will jump. And then on the edge of that cliff down there, he will stumble and uh, grab on. And if you stab his hand, he will fall down and die instantaneously as he falls into that deep pit. So what we need is for him to jump over here, which with luck he should do when he tries to round that corner. I think if he just runs over here, it happens as well. It's just when he gets to that edge that it happens. One of the things I appreciate about the um, remastered version of this game is that they toned down how painful the lava is to look at. He's going to throw fire at me. <laughs> Come on, fella. It's generally a good idea to pick up some fire resistance gear and wear it because, yeah. If this doesn't work, I'm going to have to... Yeah. So I think what I need to do is lure him back over to his far corner and then sprint back across. The reason why he attacks you is because it's your, your sister's grave that you're interfering with, but um, this is unskippable. There is no real way to get past this if you want to progress through the rest of the game. You do have to uh, steal the clothes off that corpse for some reason and then also upset a very large on-fire man. So, yeah. If this doesn't work, I'm going to have to resort to magic, which is not ideal. He has some slam attacks. The general idea is that when he slams his tentacle, I guess the tentacles, down on the, uh, on the ground, he... You can hit them with your big sword or your magic. It's not easy, though. There might be specific positioning involved with triggering the jump. He's always just kind of done it in the past. The main difficulty is that if he just keeps breathing fire on you, then uh, you just kind of die. You can hide in here. Um, it's sort of possible to maybe dodge the fire a little bit if you hide, but not really. And since he's far away, your spells will usually uh, time out before they hit him, as you can see. Which is why you need for him to slam his attacks down on the ground, but even when he does that they tend to clip into walls, which is also not ideal. So I guess I'll just spam the power attacks. I'm not sure if um, his tentacles will trigger the uh, attack instinct, imperative, I guess, on, on the homing masses, but they, they do do a lot of damage. Well, I guess that answers that question. I'll see if I can lure him back over here. There, I believe there are a couple of spots. That was close. I believe there's a couple of spots where you can cheese him with a bow and arrow, but that takes forever and therefore makes for very bad radio. So, um, I would prefer to just get him to fall off the fucking cliff, but he's not willing to oblige me. He should chase us back around here. Anyway, his whole deal is that he was given an, an enchanted ring by, by his mother, who, as we've said... Or well, possibly it was his sisters who enchanted it for him, who, you know, are these powerful pyromancers. And um, it's supposed to render him immune to the effects of the lava. But um, being a dipshit, he lost it, lost it at one point. And um, it has since turned into an entity in its own right, which we'll be fighting later. So, uh, yeah... The real moral of this story is that if you get given a ring, which is the only method by which your chronic pain can be eased, don't lose it. And especially don't lose it in such a way that it turns into an angry centipede monster in its own right. 
Come on, fella. I'm super easy to reach. If you jump, if you just jump and catch me, you can jump. Come on. Hop, hop. There we go. So he's holding onto the edge now, and uh, if you just hit him a little bit, he's supposed to lose his grip and fall down, which, there we go. Thus endeth the miserable life of a guy who really didn't deserve what he got. As far as I know, he's not particularly evil. He doesn't deserve to die. He's just kind of there. You know, um, he doesn't attack you until you interfere with his sister's corpse, at which point he quite understandably attacks you. <laughs> so um, this is probably one of the least moral murders in all of Dark Souls. There's a fair few different immor immoral murders you can commit. This is This is one of the more immoral ones and one of the least avoidable ones. So there's nothing else to do up here. However, the armor set that he's dropped is one of the best light armor sets in the game. I think I'll keep wearing that stupid helmet because I've grown to like it. 72. What's a quarter of 72? Half of 72 would be 36. And half of 36 would be 15 and a half. So I think I can go up to 15 and a half kilograms, pounds. The weight units are never actually detailed. Which... That would, wait, no, that can't be right. Really? 15 and a half would be 31, which would be 62. Man, this is hard. The most immoral murder in Dark Souls? Oh man, I really could not make a guess right now. Straight up, this might be the most immoral murder in Dark Souls. Um, does anyone have access to basic arithmetic skills who can tell me what a quarter of, of 72 is? Because I, I don't know if I have dyscalculia or what, but I straight up have serious trouble with it. I mean, technically everybody has a calculator now that we all have smartphones, but I'm using mine as a makeshift um, stream manager in an incredibly ridiculous way, which is that I have it blue tacked to the, the front of my computer screen so that I can uh, see chat messages Ideally, I would have two screens. Unfortunately, I'm going to need more people to sign up to my Patreon before I can afford to have a second screen effectively. But, um, yeah, and then I'll be able to have messages on a screen next to a screen. But this works for now. It's just this ridiculous method, but it's fine. Let's not worry about it. Actually, I'm going to go rest at the bonfire real quick. One of the interesting things about the Demon Ruins and Isolith is that it's it's kind of known as the most unfinished, most hurried part of Dark Souls. And it has kind of the energy of, I don't know if you've ever played games with, um, you know, level modifier, level, level creator, like supplementary stuff. You know, if you play Age of Empires, you can make your own maps and stuff. It kind of has the energy of when you're a kid and you're playing around with those things and you, um, Oh wow, he dropped exactly 20,000 souls. Did I have a bloodstain around there? I think I did. I'm not going to be bothered to go back and pick it up though. Uh, why am I at the bonfire? Right, because I want my spells to refresh. I'm actually going to pop a humanity because there is a red spirit which will invade us shortly. And if we aren't human, they won't invade. Plus, I'm trying to be human as much as possible whenever I stream Dark Souls because, you know, the possibility that another player will invade me is always interesting. Hasn't gone very well in this game so far, but um, you never know. Anyway, what the fuck was I talking about? Um, oh yeah, this whole zone. In, uh, in the original game and in the Prepare to Die edition, <coughs> uh, the Demon Ruins and Isolith were famous for being... <laughs> almost unplayable with this really horrible, bright, blinding glow coming off of these. Something about the way they develop the contrast between the black rock and the um, the mixture of like really saturated reds and yellows for the, um, the lava combined with a really bright sort of white effect to the lava as well meant that it was genuinely difficult to look at your computer screen while you play. And um, yeah, fortunately that's no longer the case. But in terms of it being sort of, well, 
I should really remember to dodge to the side. As a rule. You know. For when you're learning to fight giant guys. It's a good idea. Man, this is embarrassing. This is what happen when you, happens when you stop playing this game 24-7 and only play it once every couple of days for the purposes of streaming. Uh, anyway, so the design of these areas it does have this kind of copy-pasted feel. Um, it, it just does feel like when someone opens up a level editor and is playing around figuring it out and you're just like, I guess I can, uh, I guess I can just scatter these things around. Oh, hi, Asher. Welcome to the me dying. Anyway, um, yeah, so there is this kind of like just repeated assets. There's things that are elsewhere in the game and there's some new things, but there's just an absolute ton of them. Once we get into Isolith, there's uh, an entire sequence where the only things we'll be fighting are these endlessly repeated s stone statues. And um, there's a ton of them, and there's no real kind of design intent to the way they're laid out. They're just kind of scattered across the ground. And all I can think of is when I would play Age of Empires as a kid, and I would just, you know... You know, click, 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 click. Let's put archers here and see what happens. Let's see if I can fight this guy without dying terribly this time. I mean, I could just kill him in a couple hits with my spells, but... I feel like I need I need to prove my pride now. Well, okay. I don't even need to fight these guys, technically. They say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, but um, the definition of insanity is in fact actually having a mental illness. Not a lot of people know that. 18.2. I'm too heavy. That might be one reason why I'm having trouble. 15.7. <laughs> um, That's much safer. Yeah, so two of the first two bosses of the game, well, not the first two, but two of the early bosses of the game are repeated here. There's a ton of um, just demon guys standing around. And over there, there's uh, Capra demons, which we can fight. We don't need to come over here, but there's a couple of items to grab, including some unique stuff. And um, they're not even worth that much souls, I don't think. I don't know if their stats are the same as the boss version from the start of the game. Oh, that's more like it. Um, but they do seem to have uh, a lot less souls granted. I should probably make a habit of playing this for an hour or two before I stream each time I stream, I don't know. So what we're going to do is we're going to spend ages standing here luring these guys out one by one. Uh, I think they can go into the lava, it just doesn't hurt them, they're completely immune to it. As you can see. Which is uh, one of the reasons why we need to go fight the centipede demon later, is so that we can get his, um, get the ring from the guy we just fought, the Ceaseless Discharge. Which will then let us walk through lava without trouble. That slam attack has a really late animation. Well, that's all for him. But, um, yeah, there's... I believe there's even a section later where there is just a huge, huge pool of lava and there's just um, a ton, of, there's genuinely something like 30 or 40 dragon butts. Just dragon asses, just just asses of dragons as far as the eye can see. Um, they're technically in the game files called something like hopping demons or jumping demons, but they use the same uh, asset as the ass end of the zombie dragon. They are very definitely bits of dragons. Why they're there is a mystery. It's um, 
kind of implied that they're just... <laughs> I mean, you can read into it if you wish that, like, well, the gods of Anor Londo slew all the dragons, right? And this is the hellhole at the bottom of the world that they might have just thrown bits of them into. But if that's the case, you know, why did they all land, land in one specific hole that didn't have any, any kind of ceiling entry? And, uh... That's kind of all it comes down to. There's just... Reused assets. They had a dragon ass asset because it's elsewhere in the game, so. I guess you could call that an asset, if you will. First pun of the stream. Oh, yeah. I'm going to need to get more arrows soon. I've got nine left. I'm not sure if I need to do any more. Um... I'm not sure if there's anything I particularly need to lure out other than these guys. But in fact, I'm just, I could probably just blast them all and go rest. That would have been a better option from, like, from the start would have just been to just laser blast these guys into oblivion. Which is a different game, but let's not get into that right now. There's an adage from, uh... Terry Pratchett's Discworld books that one of the one of the um, proverbs of you know dwarven warriors is that you know if he's tall enough if he's twice your height that just means that your head isn't the right height to bite his dick or something like that probably better phrased considering it's Terry Pratchett but I often think of that whenever I'm fighting Dark Souls bosses and that's all for you sir So the real trick will be to grab these things right now. We could come back later when we have um, the magic ring that makes us not immune, but take a lot less damage from lava. But uh, that would require us to fight all these things again, and I don't want to. So what I'm instead going to do is attempt to show off and possibly fail and die that you can actually make it onto the lava and back without dying. Because convection doesn't really exist in video games ever. This is something I bring up from time to time, but, you know, convection, schmection, who cares? It's just, you know, you don't touch the hot thing, you're fine. That's all what really matters. So if we equip all of our best, you know, fire resistance gear, which I don't remember mostly what is, actually. It might just be this black room, uh, the gold room set, actually. I'd like to put some trousers on because I think this is a really silly looking set for the most part, but um, that can wait. What are we up to? 17.1, that's fine. So if we sprint over here, we can grab this and absolutely fail. I'm going to see how close that blood stain is to the edge of the lava, lava pond, and if it's too far in, we'll come back when I have the magic ring that will make this less stupid. I don't see it. It must be around that corner. Oh, these guys don't respawn. Okay, huh. I genuinely thought these demons respawn. That might be a change from earlier versions of the game. I don't really remember. But um, yeah, there's one other thing we could grab around here, but I want to get that blood stain if it's not out in the lava. It shouldn't be because there's gen I think there's about a second or, or a two second gap between where you were when you died and where the game puts your blood stain. This is so that if you fall off a cliff, your blood stain doesn't spawn in halfway down the cliff. Yeah, see, perfectly reachable. And you know what that means. That means we can abuse our immortality the way that people have been doing for as long as people have been immortal in fiction and yet never seems to work out for them. It'll, I'm sure it'll be fine for us, though. Oh no, you came back wrong. Well, what if I was wrong to begin with, huh? Did you consider that? Repeated resurrection sapping away the fundamental nature of your existence can't hurt you if you're already fucked up. So with a bit of luck, I should be able to sprint and jump across here. 
Yeah, I mean, of course. Like, it's not like any kind of, like, cosmic imbalances would eventually come around to bite you in the ass. It's not like that's a major theme of, of Dark Souls as a as a series or anything. Well, I guess this guy won't be needing that anymore. It's actually it's actually faster and safer to sprint rather than to, to repeatedly dodge roll, but the Dark Souls instinct is dodge roll, dodge roll, dodge roll. Let's see if I can hop across this one. <laughs> and other unnecessary risks. I'm actually going to kill this guy before we go, since I can um, blast him to bits. One of the things that I do find a little bit irritating coming back to Dark Souls 1, uh, aside from all of the other quality of life improvements you get in Dark Souls, by Dark Souls 3, just the fact that there are hybrid spellcasting apparatuses, you know, there are spellcasting tools that are also weapons, and there are spellcasting tools that are for multiple kinds of spellcasting. I think you can get pyromancy flames that are also sorcery staves, you can get um, those things that do sorcery and miracles, and there's weapons that can be used to used as catalysts as well. Right, okay, let's get actually back to work and see if we can finish this zone today, because I feel like this, you know, beat beat two zones and a major boss per session thing is going pretty well so far. I've actually been kind of racking my brains of what to th what to stream next. I think I might variety stream for a little bit for a week or a week or so before kicking into the next major project because there's a few different things I'd like to dip in and out of. Maybe some some Hitman 2016, which I enjoyed very much. Maybe some uh, some of the old Hard Space Shipbreaker. Maybe even some ship space hardbreaker. Yep, my, my my lovely flatmate Jules is very keen for me to do Hitman because she loves watching people be murdered brutally. There's nothing quite like the the sort of solid clink of um, you know a steel wrench going into the side of someone's skull to make her happy. Frankly, it's terrifying living with her. But there's plenty of other things on the list. And then, of course, I'm not sure what to pick for my for the actual major proper thing that I'll stream next. Hollow Knight's a good option because it's... Well, I mean, I started to stream it previously, but I would start over from the beginning just because I... I always kind of have to whenever I come back to a game that I've, I've given up part way through. I can't remember what I'm doing or why I was where I was or how the controls work and I have to start from the beginning again. Is there an item over there? Nope. Dark Souls loves to have fun vistas instead of cool loot. Is that another guy or is that did that one respawn? Do some of them respawn? I know that the ones down there respawn. Is it just the ones in the lava puddle that don't? Yeah, that's actually why that's why I don't finish a lot of long RPGs. Even though I really enjoy long RPGs, um, you know, I've always had this thing in my brain whenever I play games or just whenever I do anything in life, really. I don't know if it's an ADHD thing or just a me thing or whatever, but there is this weird sort of kind of what my brain has decided is the thing I get to do at the moment. There's the one thing that's satisfying, and even if I am actively enjoying something else and don't want to stop it, I still end up having to move on to the new thing. And it can often be a pain in the ass to figure out what the new thing even is. You know, I'll be so I'll be 40 hours into an 80 hour RPG and I'll just stop booting it up and I'll find my I'll, I'll be like, can we play some more? I just I just want to play some more of this. I really want to see what happens with the story next. And it's just like, no. Instead of that, how about you read books? Like, bear with me here. Like, I know it's 2021, but what if, what if books? And I'm like, I like books, but why can't I read it and play the RPG? And the brain is just like, no. No, only book, no RPG. Okay, well, can I, can I draw pictures? No, no, only book. And it's really frustrating. 
It, so it means I have kind of one game that's my focus at any given time, and if I don't have a game that's my focus, it can get pretty frustrating. And also, if I... What the fuck was that? Oh, hey, that thing's not supposed to spawn out until I get uh, closer. I didn't know that you, they would trigger if you got this close from here. Well, those were useless. I straight up have no idea if they're if they're stronger or, or if they're weaker than their early game counterpart. Uh, what the fuck was I talking about? Oh yeah, so I don't have that problem so much with streaming and let's plays because that's a creative act that's kind of separate and re reproducible no matter what I'm doing, which is one of the reasons why I committed to making let's plays in the first place is because it was the only kind of creative outlet I had. Um, that wouldn't just get randomly stymied by my brain deciding it was no longer time to do whatever it was I was trying to achieve. Oh, you've been you've been drawing every day for three days? Congratulations. Guess what? You aren't going to draw again for six months. No, 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 no matter what you do, that's that's there's nothing you can do about it, I'm afraid. I've played through the first Mass Effect about six times. And I've played through Mass Effect 2 halfway about six times because I, I always get that far before I, 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 I just stop being able to play it anymore. It wouldn't be a problem if I just would be able to save my save files long term but I tend to lose them as well because the idea that I go into you know Mass Effect 2 and don't have the in-game record of everything I did in the previous saves is just anathema to me because I know that in in 3 in Mass Effect 3, there's going to be payoff for stuff I did. And if there's going to be payoff, I have to preserve so that I can have the payoff. And if I have to do that, I have to play, play through fucking all of it. That's why I stopped playing The Witcher 3 as well, which I really loved. I thought that game was great. And I'm a huge apologist for the, the other games. I actually think The Witcher 2 is the best Witcher game. Um, and it's a very good game in its own right, in my opinion. It's um, Witcher 2 might be one of my favourite games, even though I've only played it once. But... I, uh, I stalled out halfway through The Witcher 3, which means I now need to start The Witcher 3 over again, which means I need my save file from Witcher 1 and 2 that preserves all the various decisions I made that made my Geralt who he was. Which means I might need to start over. I've actually been vaguely tempted to stream The Witcher games, but um, that would be further down the list than some of the other stuff I'm streaming. But yeah, so god, uh... I keep getting distracted by tangents. The other things I'm thinking about streaming are... Let's see if I can remember them off the top of my head. Um, the original um, Resident Evil. The uh, original Deus Ex. A few other things. Those would be like consistent three-a-week streams like these. Yes, yeah, so I, did, I did play only one route because um, I didn't like being... I didn't like... The idea of siding with Roach at all, so I didn't I didn't particularly want to go back. That, by the way, is the boss we'll be fighting shortly. That statue thing is the centipede demon, which is um a bit of the uh of the ceaseless discharge that fell off, I guess. And went off and just became his own guy, you know, he became his own dude just doing his own thing. So while I did really enjoy The Witcher 2, having picked um you know, the square tell in the first, uh, in the first playthrough. I couldn't really see myself siding with someone else on another playthrough, so I didn't really see myself making my, my decisions differently. Also, my whole way through that, I kind of felt like I had this almost collaborative thing going on, where it's kind of like, I'm telling my own story about Geralt to myself and deciding who he is. Which is interesting, because that was my way into being into the Witcher series as a thing you know, as a whole. And, you know, now I'm reading the books and watching the TV show, and it's just fascinating that these all these different, um, like, interpretations of the same character and different ways he is that are still sort of him. It's so bizarre to me when I see someone who's played the Witcher games and, you know, their Geralt is like this, this cold, distant guy who's very aloof and doesn't help people where mine's got a twinkle in his eye and a sense of irony and a sense of humor and and a sort of a d 
desire to, to find justice for people, and sometimes people are, you know, fantastical entities of some kind. But yeah, if I get solidly into this streaming gig and I keep up with it, I, I could see myself um, doing a full playthrough of all three Witcher games. Don't hold out for that anytime soon, though. But I've actually been, I've been really keen on the idea of going back to the, the Witcher series, so... I might just play them for my play them for my own benefit right now. You know, while I get quietly murdered by these fuckers. So I might want to upgrade that bonfire actually because this is a boss arena for a boss fight in a moment. It's time for our third battle with one of the recurring bosses of the game. As we work our way through these repeated assets. I actually don't hate the design of Isolith, and um, as you mentioned earlier, there is this kind of endearing, you know, reminds me of, reminds me of when I was a kid putting together custom maps and so on, energy to it. But um, I do get pretty bored of fighting this, these guys over and over again. I don't think their move set is put together particularly well for this purpose. I'll probably put a poll on Twitter when we're nearing the end of this game about what should be my next major stream. So keep an eye out for that and maybe go follow me on Twitter. I don't tweet very much, but it's where you find um, news about what streams I'm doing and so on. And when I do unannounced streams, which I haven't been doing lately because three a week is kind of my maximum right now. But um, when I start doing those again, they'll be on there as well. Also, on the off chance that anyone watching doesn't know, I have a YouTube channel where I do in-depth Let's Plays. So, um, like carefully planned and researched things where I talk about their historical context and so on. That guy is supposed to drop some titanite. Where's my fucking titanite? You owe me money, bitch. This is completely unacceptable. But yeah, so um, I suppose there's kind of an irony to, to this zone being kind of unfinished. Because those uh, fire-breathing demons are interesting. They're sort of half-carved. They have an energy to me of perhaps the statues themselves coming to life in some way. Is that guy turning to face me? Yeah, he is. Are we, are we cool? Are we good? Can I just take... No, fuck. Once again defeated by the mechanism of many stabs to the abdomen. Or the stabdomen, if you will. I always say if you will, and then people never do. Right, there's a couple things to grab over there, then we'll upgrade them on fire and then go fight a boss. But yeah, there's um Wow, he hit me pretty hard somehow. Hey, how about you how about you hop backwards off this ledge? That'd be really convenient for me, guy. I'm just gonna blast him into the ether. These guys have shit magic resistance, so. Ether blasted. But, yes, so um is mentioned that titanite demons, which we've seen before, but not down here yet, are um, the vestiges of something. Great slabs of titanite that were owned or belonged to the god of smiths, whose name I don't think is mentioned. It's, uh... Oh god damn it, I can't rem That would have been a really good time for my weird disability where I can't remember names to not have kicked off because um, if, I'd, if I'd mentioned the name of the front man of the smiths that would have been perfect. It would have been very funny and I would have been very proud of myself. I mean, yeah, Souls does love vestiges. I think it loves evocative words and that's a, a classic one. 
Also, these wiggly guys will fuck you up if you're not careful. Some of them have acid breath, which will degrade your equipment very quickly. But, yeah, the, um... I'm not sure why my, my little orbs didn't trigger to attack him. What a shame. But yeah, so they're, they're said to have sprung forth somehow from the titanite slabs of the of that particular deity. And, um... What that sort of means, really, in any, in any real sense, is a mystery. But, um... If that can happen, perhaps these statues that pre-existed in this area have been brought to life by the excess of life bursting through this area. Because what people don't realise, and I've talked about this previously, is that the aspect of the the Lord Soul that you get down here in the Demon Ruins is not that of fire. There's a lot of fire going on down here, and it's sort of where pyromancy ultimately came from, but the Chaos Flame was created through the manipulation of life. The, there's four divine spheres going on, light, dark, life, and death, and each of those pairs is oppositional to one another. So all of the kind of like mythic sphere of influence that belongs down here is not, is not fire in and of itself, it's life. And I believe that's why that the people who are corrupted by the Chaos Flame have these sort of bulbous, cancerous appearances. <clears throat> because when the existential concept of life itself has become, in some way, corrupted and destroyed, well, what is life running out of control? It's, uh, it's cancer, isn't it? So... Also, I cannot believe that I just said isn't it at the end of end of a sentence, considering all of the memes about how English people just say isn't it all the time. Uh, I've been in Scotland for six years, can't I be Scottish now? I keep I keep accidentally saying words like Disney and, and, and Weans and stuff, and saying it in my shitty English accent. Uh, which just makes me sound like a dickhead, but it's not my fault, it's just what everybody around me says. Um, anyway, I got distracted from a tangent again. But yeah, so life running out of control is cancerous. Therefore, the visual designs of the creatures who've been corrupted by life running out of control are also bulbous and cancery. That is interesting, but um, the, the entities in Ulusil, first off, the, um, the DLCs to the game, I personally feel have a sort of tacked on energy. They don't feel like they're particularly intended to be they weren't necessarily a part of the original whole. Don't forget, the first DLC pack is literally a test area that, that wasn't supposed to be in the game, which they then sort of finished and turned into a full level. You have, to, I mean, you have to judge the whole work as presented, so obviously it's part of it and should be considered as such, but I also feel like there are mitigating factors. Um, but the thing about the, the entities in Ulusil is that they don't feel cancerous to me they feel swollen um they feel like they've soaked up something they shouldn't that has filled them up from outside which is fitting for the corruption of the abyss whereas these guys have have their organic forms very much kind of blurring around and 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 and, and expanding in ways that are not not very healthy <laughs> So, um, all of that was kind of a preamble to set up why, you know, the other thing I was going to say, which is that if it's the case that life itself has, has become untethered in some way and spread in the ways life should not spread, then, and we know that that can happen with t the titanite slabs and they become titanite demons, then is it not possible that uh, it happens also with just the, the shitload of statues that are around here? In Dark Souls 3, there are a lot of statues of demons. Um, and there's maybe some implications that demons have turned to stone. So if that's the case, maybe all demons come from stone. Maybe all of the maybe all of the demons were statues that were in this place. Yeah, I think that that is definitely an issue with entities. I don't think it's an issue with life specifically, but it, like, there's kind of a linguistic issue with, you know, the difference between life, the, the sort of, like, existential concept, and life, 
things that are alive. But you're right that one of the consistency themes throughout this game is of reaching towards something and, um, you know, your desperate searching after something in some way corrupting you or damaging you in some fashion. Is this... Can I just jump over there to get that? I think I can. Woo, okay. Yeah, that's... Hmm. I don't think there's a direct connection there, really. But I can see some of the similarity in the concept. Fuck. Love to bounce off things. So this is important because this is a shortcut which, um, if you open this shortcut earlier, before you've done certain things in the plot, by uh, doing the stuff that you need to do for the Chaos Servant Covenant and bringing lots of um, stuff to feed uh, the, the Pale Lady, then um, this door will open and you can go through it. And if you kill a specific one of these bugs before uh, Solaire ends up in this area, you can save Solaire's life. But you haven't really saved him because he's already sort of lost himself to his his compulsion. He doesn't really ever say anything to you ever again, but he will show up for the final boss fight and help you kill his god, which is which is cool of him, I guess. I actually think that his his story arc fits the themes of the games better if you let him die, which is which is tragic, but also I can't be bothered to farm 30 humanity to save his life. Let's go fight a boss. Or indeed get bodied, which might just happen. Yep. So, um, as I have said with these streams previously, I'm going to be silent during the during the boss fights because I have to focus. If this was a uh, if this was a let's play, I would just edit commentary in afterwards because I'm clever like that. Oh, but before I forget. No, I didn't kill him. I merely allowed him to be to become dead. Um, my excuse for that was because I'm I'm playing through this game as someone might on their first run through it. Uh, to some extent, to the extent that that's possible when you know this this well. Anyway, a bunch of these guys are still just statues. Like that's not hovering. It's just part of the stone here. So presumably there were a ton of these statues around for some reason, um, and then they started to come to life. But yeah, once we get back to the boss arena, it'll be quiet time from me. The main reason that that guy is difficult is that he has these huge AoE attacks and it's quite a small arena with a lot of roots that you kind of get stuck on. I'm tempted to just run past this guy. Oh, actually, if you go lower than him on the stairs, um, which is not what I just allowed to happen, I would rather save my, my healing juice for the, the boss fight. If you get lower than him on the stairs, some of his attacks will whiff, which is useful. Not that one, obviously. These guys must be bored out of their fucking minds, I swear to god. Imagine that you're just chilling down here for an eternity, and then once every few hundred years some prospective chosen undead will show up. And you're just like, oh, look, a visitor, finally. Finally something new is happening. And then you stand on him and... Oh, oh, they're gone, I guess. Guess it's back to standing in front of this doorway for eternity. Which I think, in this horrible late-stage capitalism poison world, everyone who's ever worked a kind of a menial job can understand... I say, having only worked a menial job for like two weeks because I'm sufficiently disabled that I get to live on the absolute minimum amount of money possible. Oofed. I think that's one stab left, but maybe two. I hate fighting this guy on the staircase, I really do. I also hate that it's 25 degrees today, Jesus Christ.
I'm literally going to die of heat stroke at the age of 45 because of global fucking warming, I swear to God. My uh, recording setup is in my living room, which gets like a solid three hours of direct sunlight in the afternoon, so it just turns into an oven. It's awful. I am oven. I am not oven a good time right now. That one was a bit of a stretch. Oh yeah, if you're lower than him on the stairs, he can stand on you and get a bit of free damage in. I would call that a cheese strat if it weren't directed at me. I think we established that I'm not Scottish, I'm, I'm English who's just pretending and hoping. I walk among them, but I am not one of them. The real irony is that I, I kind of want to just go live with my family in Ireland. Scotland's nice and all, but Ireland's still in the EU. I was I was low-key half-raised by my, my Irish grandparents. They, they, like, took care of me, like, multiple times a week, so I just kind of... I feel a connection to my homeland, but... Well, not to my homeland, but my, to my... You know, ancestry. And I'm also very aware that if I go there, I will sound like they're oppressors. Hi, Mavarinthia. Conveniently, I have died just in time to say hello. So, straight up, that branch killed me. Um, I couldn't dodge out of the way of the explosion because, um, branch. <sighs> this guy should clearly go to work for a bank. He's a very good branch manager. That's maybe my most tenuous pun yet. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose it's probably colder down there, and at least it hasn't been hot all summer, but Aberdeen does get really hot, um, hot Septembers. I'm not equipped to deal with 25 degree heat in a house made of granite. With no ventilation. I generally find it easier to heat up than to cool down, so... I prefer the cold to the heat. Anyway, if the English don't want it to be too fucking hot, then maybe they shouldn't have kicked off the Industrial Fucking Revolution, hmm? Has anyone ever considered that? It's ultimately all your fault pretending that my Irish heritage counts. I was actually going to go down to the garden today for the first time because we've got a tiny scrap of shared garden that, our, that everybody in the, our flats can have access to. Oofed. But um, there were some people down there and I'm very ill and they were not wearing masks. I know that transmission rates outdoors don't, it's not the same thing, but still.
Have you considered not being so large that I can't see what you're doing? So this is actually, uh, in my opinion, the most difficult of the three versions of this, obvi this boss. Obviously the first one isn't tough at all because he's the tutorial boss. The second time in the uh, Undead Asylum Redux is uh, difficult if you can't keep your distance, but if you can, he's not so tough. But that's a large square arena that does not have these roots everywhere for me to get stuck on. The important thing is to keep circling to one side of him, because his big AoE attacks happen in front of him. The sort of damage area of the AoE starts um, under his staff as he swings it forwards, which means that it, if, you're, if you can circle around behind him, you can get away a bit more safely. He should really do fire damage, but I'm not sure he does. Is pride happening? I thought they were all cancelled for because of the disease that has crippled me. Well, I hope you have fun and don't catch anything. By the way, Gamers Against Weed, I have no idea what, uh, what on earth you were saying <laughs> about dominoes and London sinking. Another major component to fighting him is uh, learning to manage greed. You need to know exactly when you can and can't afford to get an extra hit in, and if you aren't sure, don't try to get an extra hit in. Ditto healing. Because if you heal only for him to hit you again, um, that's a waste. That's going to kill me. It's the two explosions in a row that keeps killing me. Um, the knockdown from the first one doesn't give me enough time to get out from under the second one. Oh, that dominoes. Okay, fair enough. And the black rock is coal. Ah, I figured it out. I've got the Rosetta Stone to answer this mystery. Straight up, I thought it was- I literally actually was thinking of pizza! I thought- I thought you were connecting too many pizza places getting opened to... Global destruction. Um... Now I want pizza, but I've already ordered food twice today, and that was a huge mistake. I'm not even hungry. Are you suggesting that the Italian contribution to global warming is primarily in pizza places? Oh yeah? And how did you feel about it? How was your Domino's experience? I say, sounding like a customer service rep. Please. Please, can I, die? can I not die this time?
Yeah, that's a pretty common response to, dom to Domino's Pizza. Fuck. Domino's spiritually enriched dough. Well, I need to get behind him ASAP. Straight up, my main problem is patience. If you take it slow, it's a lot easier. This should be it. And that's how you beat the Demon Fire Sage. First try. Ah, oh, yeah. Note to self, remember to edit out all of my failures. So there's fuck all else to do down here, so let's go open a shortcut and then uh, head on to the next zone. Well, the next boss, actually, who's kind of right underneath. We just have to get through an absolute shit ton of these guys, because that's basically the only challenge in this zone. I mean... It's basically the only thing you have to do regularly in this zone. It's not a challenge because it's not difficult. But they are just everywhere. They're the only generic enemy in this area. And while that's a crime that Dark Souls commits a lot, there's a lot of zones where there's only one or two enemy types. Um, most of the enemies in Dark Souls have really diverse and interesting movesets. You know, the, the basic shitty hollow men. Even the ones in rags have, like four or five different attacks which can happen in different ways um and then the hollow soldiers have a lot of different abilities and they have different weapons you know but these guys are just identical and they only do one thing which is hover towards you and breathe fire still this looks familiar right big magic disc i'm sure we i'm sure we can remember where we've seen that before also this staircase leads back to the boss arena we were just in so let's not go there bzum, 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 bzum. well it's not just that they're slow slow to react and telegraph their attack it's that they only have one attack anyway so you don't even have the chance of mistaking what attack they're gonna do actually no that's not true they have two attacks they have one where they where they breathe while rotating in an arc, and the other is just they breathe fire directly forwards at you. Ooh, one more level and we should be able to start casting Crystal Soul Spear. I would say they have one weapon with two attacks. Do we have any more human- no, hang on. Do we have any more- did we find a, a soul somewhere? No, I guess not. Well, goodbye. Thank you. Got anything for me? Absolutely not. So this isn't necessarily a shorter route in terms of geographical distance, in terms of how far you have to actually travel, but um, if you go this way, you only have to fight a bunch of those irritating stone demons and you don't have to fight uh, anything more important than that. Oops. <clears throat> Let's not fall in the hole. So at the bottom of this staircase should be... <clears throat> Excuse me. At the bottom of this staircase should be the uh, access to the next boss, which is the centipede demon I've been talking about. Which, again, it's called the centipede demon, but we very explicitly know from item descriptions that it is... Um, that it sprung in some way from the magic ring that the uh, Ceaseless Discharge had and lost. So my belief that demons in Dark Souls sprang from inanimate objects brought to life by the power of life itself becoming corrupted, I think is pretty well founded.
wait, what the fuck is the shortcut for? There's a bonfire right here. <laughs> Maybe it's so you can get back out more easily. I always forget that there's a bonfire right here, like... And it's not one that was added, because they only added one in the in this remaster. Well, well, well. I am never not going to make that mistake. Or misremember that, I suppose. Bonk. Oh, I didn't bounce off this time. The mechanics of when you do and don't bounce off is a total mystery to me. Oh, but I'm not human. I should be human in case someone wants to in case there's someone to summon in. Well, back we go. You know, it's so convenient that these roots happen to grow in this way. It'd be really awful if these if these passageways were blocked off and there was no way around. There's something interesting about that kind of game design, actually. When you design spaces in a game, so often... Well, I mean, maybe I will summon in some bitches, you don't know. We'll have to see who's waiting by the door, won't we? Answer? Nobody. I'm going to have to fight this boss by myself. We did see a summon sign earlier, but it was two in the middle of nowhere. Um, she was probably wanting to be summoned for the Fire Sage boss fight for some reason. Fire Sage is not one of the popular farming bosses, one of the, the popular bosses people like to help people with. Oh, summon sign. Actually, this is Slayer, isn't it? Or Who the fuck? My boy! My precious son! Is there another? I swear there's... No, I guess it's just the glow from this lava. Well, I won't have to fight alone. My good buddy's still here, still going strong. Anyway, what the hell was I talking about? Uh, I had some kind of arch point to make in the way that I do, but I can't remember what it was. Gee, I sure hope that doesn't come to life and- oh. So you can actually tail cut this guy and if you do he drops the the orange charred ring which is the one that will let you walk on lava. Um, if you kill him outright you get it too but uh, it's more difficult to do that. There's, there's a couple of ways to make the fight slightly easier. One is to summon in other human players, as always. Youch. Uh, one is actually to sprint around the corner where there's an easier battlefield. So now why the fuck are you standing there and letting this happen? Um, it doesn't have a ton of hit points, as you can see. But if I keep missing, that won't matter. Yeah, I did choose the Ceaseless Discharge, just because he's a pain in the ass to fight when you're a wizard. He was not cooperative, it took a little bit of effort. And that's all for him, so that should get us the ring. I believe it's necessary. I don't think you can get through here without it dropping. There it is. The orange charred ring. Everybody's favourite um, leafy green vegetable. So we're going to use this basically for five minutes and then never again. Let's have a quick look at what it says, actually. Enchanted by a witch, reduces lava damage. Since his sores were inflamed by lava from birth, his witch sisters gave him this special ring, but fool that he is, he dropped it, and from that spot a terrible centipede demon was born. Supposedly, the end of Gwyn's knights was when they um, marched down into uh, down into Isolith to try and try and stop demons from coming from there. It's kind of interesting. Because there is no, isn't isn't a sort of mandatory oppositional relationship between them, between uh, Isoneth and Anor and Orlando, the way there is between, um, well, life and death are oppositional. 
and that is, you know, accounted for in the metaphysics of the setting. And light and dark are oppositional, as is also accounted for in the metaphysics of the setting. This fascinates me. This is not an illusory wall, it's, it's definitely real. This super looks openable, but it is never actually opened. I believe there is an unused hallway behind it. If you turn no clip on and you go through, there's a hallway that's just kind of a dead end. What I don't know is if that's supposed to imply that there was that was a proper intentional entrance into somewhere at one point that was sealed up, um, or if it was something the developers intended to be some kind of zone or area or shortcut even, but alas, we will never know. So I'm going to take a rest at this bonfire in a moment and have a five minute or so break just to get my jaw unlocked and go get some more water. So bear with me. I will not be longer than five minutes. Our poor buddy. This is where he really loses hope and that's where we kind of, why we kind of find him um, I believe he doesn't go hollow the way that most people lose hope go hollow. He, he, he does something else to himself, but that's going to be two or three minutes and I'll be back. All right, I am back, and we are back, and I am in the game, and so are you, sort of, in a way. Through the medium of me playing it for you, so that you don't have to. There's usually a lot of messages from players around here being, you know, gently, quietly tragic about the fact that our beloved buddy is, uh, is ollieing out here at this point. But yeah, so see how, see how the sort of, like, red bloom around this lava is that was much brighter and much lighter in the original game and it really contributed to this incredibly strong contrast effect that made it almost impossible to look directly at it was actually blinding to try and get through this zone also my stream manager is not currently connected to the chat properly because of bad reasons i guess so i cannot see what people are saying if anyone's saying anything Ah, right. Arrows. Hmm. This guy's got the right idea. This is the zone that I mentioned a little while back, which is just kind of a giant room full of dragon asses. Um, the fact that they're dragon asses is clearly apparent, but they are definitely the second half of the uh, undead dragon model. If we sprint past them, we might be able to get away. They have quite tight hip uh, aggro radiuses, but um, it's usually worth clearing some of them out with arrows, which is long and tedious. 
because they are also very, very difficult to fight. Their general attacks in, uh, consist of leaping high in the air and dropping on you, which is just a pain for everybody, them included. So I'm going to see how sneakily I can get past them, but there's a lot of items to pick up around here. I just, I mean, it's just lava. How much could it hurt, Michael? Five pains? But this is, this is the most, um, you know, 15 year old making an Age of Empires map just clicking, oh, I'll spawn a whole bunch of chukonus over here, which I probably mispronounced, but um, don't hold it against me. One of these has a secret door on it, or possibly two of them do, with a bonfire in, so that'll be useful if I can get to the damn thing. But, oh, of course, hang on, actually, I've just realised I have the, oh, uh, hi. Wait, are we cool? I wasn't talking to you. But yeah, so um, I'm not sure what the hitboxes, uh, the the aggro radii rather on the on these things are. I remember them being really aggressive in the original game. I don't know if that's been changed. Uh, as far as I know, there's no mechanical changes other than the ones I've explicitly mentioned, such as the addition of a uh, an option to change your your covenant allegiance at bonfires and uh, the addition of one single bonfire in one place in the game but um i don't know i don't know if they've made some small changes like that i think this is the one with the bonfire maybe i'm gonna have to reset my stream manager because it's not working i can't see anything Very stealthy. It's almost like not having legs and relying on levitation lets you avoid leaving the sounds of footsteps. Also, some of them levitate but don't come to life, which I assume are ones that are in the process of turning into real alive things. So this is a good place to rest and level up, which I should have done before we came through here. Because now we can hit 40, which means that we can hopefully attune Crystal Soul Arrow. And then really ruin someone's day. Oh, Crystal Oh, it's 44. Oh my god. Well, I suppose it's fair that that spell does such an insane amount of damage because... I mean, that it's so expensive because it does do an insane amount of damage. So, it'll be another four levels before we can kick that off. Can I get much closer with these spells? How much do we get from that? That's at least one more level up. Can't remember what we get for a brave warrior, but let's just pop all of them and see. 30,000. That's not going to be enough for two level ups. Oh, I take it back, it will. That's good. That takes up to 42 and half of one more level. Do I have enough to get another one? I maybe do. Okay, I'm not going to have enough for another level up, but you never know, I might be able to obtain enough as we go through here. So we should be able to blitz through and take care of the boss of this area, but now that I think about it, we might have missed... Now that I think about it, we might have... There's definitely a chest around here somewhere that has something valuable in it. I think it's a soul of a hero. Uh, but there's also a... Oh right, these guys respawn, of course. Well, there's a couple items over there that we're going to try and grab, but there's also... The uh, progress of Sieg Sigward, Sigmaya, Sieg, Sieg someone. Uh, the Onion Knight, his storyline is going to progress a little bit around here, so um, I need to try and remember whether I progressed it far enough that this is where he'll show up next. We went to Blight Town, um, and then he agreed to continue onwards. But does he go meet his daughter before or after that? That's what I don't recall. 
the minutiae of these little people and their lives. How can anyone keep it track, keep track of it in their heads? Who knows? Hint, this is why the chosen undead has no friends. I get very quickly tired of the of the bush 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 noise of that stuff. Oh, that's a thought. I was going to tweak my audio settings. Not for my microphone, but for the game. Is the game loud enough that you guys can hear it? Because when I was editing my last um, archive to upload on YouTube, it de Oh, I've aggroed one. Oh, shit. Well, this is the soul of a hero, anyway. So you can hear the game stuff. You can hear spells going kapow and stuff. Is that correct? Hmm. Weird, 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 weird. I wonder why it was so quiet. I wonder if there was a problem with the last stream's audio or if the, like, recording it spits out somehow isn't isn't keeping it properly. Hmm, mystery. Like the game volume, not, not my volume, not my speech. God almighty, it's warm. Oh, you should definitely be able to hear the lava burning me. Okay, that's... Problem confirmed. Oh, yeah. This is how we iterate. How about now? Can you hear me being set on fire constantly on repeat? Because if it's not that, it might be in the Windows settings, which will take me a minute or two longer to fix. Alright, I probably just set the in-game audio a bit too low then. It's difficult because my headphones are weirdly hypersensitive. I have to have all of the audio set to minimum when I wear my headphones. Um because there's no real way for me to make it not be deafeningly loud, deafeningly, deafening, deafeningly. Why, why do these guys take less damage, uh, take more damage to kill than they used to? It was two hits previously. These ones aren't different. I'm pretty sure their hit point totals are the same. Hmm. Oh, maybe I unequipped an item that was giving me a slight increase or something. Hmm, I don't know. Anyway, this whole zone is just this. Um, in my old school Let's Play, the very first Let's Play I ever did back in 2015, um, I actually went on a long, long monologue in this area about the way that this is influenced by... the design of this area is influenced by... Um, historical um, architecture from, from regions in, in India. I believe Dravidian architecture is, is a major part. Well, but like the research I did for that, I did seven years ago, I say, crumbling into dust and blowing away in the wind. So I don't remember any of it now. But um, it's still interesting. I, I, I think I had a point back then about how like Possibly, possibly this was one of the sort of things picked to give this zone a sort of a primordial feel because, you know, in European fantasy, um, or fantasy written by Europeans, and obviously this is a Japanese game, but it very much intentionally is riffing on the traditions of European fantasy. Um, you know, there is this kind of like truly ancient and primordial... Um, What's the word? Uh, Orientalism applied to, to ancient Indian architecture. Even though, like, in terms of oldness, it's not necessarily older than... Uh, or not much older than, you know, a 2,000-year-old castle. And it's definitely not much older than, like, a Hellenic Greek ruin or something, so... These guys, these, these, uh, these enemies have the best walking audio in the game. Just listen to that. I love that noise. I love that noise so much. These are one of the weirder enemies in the game, and it's nice that they're sort of actually specially designed. 
Um, I believe they're inspired by some old D&D monsters, but uh, if they spit that stuff on you, it, it rusts your weapons. And um, they have a grab attack where they pick you up and put them in, put you in the top of their head, which is a sort of an open bucket thing, mouth. Um, then they will chew you up and spit you out. Oh, see that up there? That's a pyromancer. Although actually, it's a flame sorcerer who has turned into pyro uh, turned towards chaos pyromancy because. If we read the item description for the item that the boss we just fought dropped, um, the Demon Fire Sage, it talks about how um, flame sorcery was the original sorcery, and that sorcery was originally an art that manipulated fire, but didn't necessarily have a connection to um, to fire as a as a primordial concept to the first flame itself, the way that pyromancy later does. Well, there is an interview with Miyazaki about Dark Souls 1, which is printed in Dark Souls Design Works, where one of the, uh, where he mentions that one of the, like, goals for these games, one of the parameters for at least Dark Souls 1, was this idea about not having an objective truth. This is, this is something that I'm sure you've heard me talk about before, because it's the soapbox I climb back on every time I'm streaming, every time I'm doing a Let's Play, about how people, um, in, the way in, people interact with media, and this kind of lack of media literacy, where people are immune to the existence of metaphor and allegory and allusion or even just a character being misinformed or incorrect or telling a lie for their own benefit um and um i love it when stories especially games are willing to have have things be mysterious or ambiguous or unexplained and um one of the one of the designs according to this interview one of the purposes of dark souls was to have no objective truth all of these people who who reach so hard into into the minds of the author and try and try and pull out some image of the platonic truth of the narrative like it doesn't exist none of it exists whatever they told us exists and everything else is total conjecture so um you can see why i might be frustrated by the tendency of dark souls law videos and the like to have these obsessive examinations of ah this person is mentioned and this thing is mentioned therefore these must have a direct relational relationship and we therefore can prove that this is that and this is this guy and this guy's talking about this guy and this that means this happened no like it's not and uh, miyazaki is on record saying that one of one of his goals with this game was to not have any kind of story bible not have any kind of ultimate truth of the narrative and instead to fill a world with interesting weird unexplained evocative things that would encourage the players to come up with their own interpretations which they have but then every single one of those players making lore videos um has mistaken their interpretation for the objective truth hidden by the designer and that's exactly the kind of that's the thing that i hate when people do that's the thing i've been complaining about for years as i've been doing these these let's plays um is this 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 compulsive need to know what the real truth of the story is when sometimes the real truth is is there is no real truth and sometimes the real truth is it's a metaphor or an allegory or any other kind of thing that's a miss so this is the only respawning titanite demon in the game um as you can see he's not taking very much damage he can be a real pain to fight on this bridge because his sweep attack can actually just knock you straight off the edge and into the lava. And um, if you're like me, you might well have taken off your orange charred ring by this point. I haven't done that in this game, but that's definitely a mistake I've made in other plays of this game. Is he close enough? Yeah. Fantastic, I found the cheese. That should be all for him. But yeah, so I think it's interesting. And I do want to clarify, Maverinthia, that I'm not like... 
was not like me getting at you. That was not me like putting you on blast for for that. I just um, I think interpretation is really fun, and I think it's a really important thing to do with a narrative. But there is this there is this really strong trend in uh, media at the moment on f and people enjoying media and being like. Um, Oh, interesting. Yeah, I think I think someone I think someone mentioned that to me actually. But yeah, that's that's my that's my personal theory is that they kind of gave up on that imperative when they realized that people were just going to uh pe people are going to people are going to search for, you know, the author intended truth even if there is no such thing. Everyone talks about Solera as being this kind of legendary great warrior, but, um, get wrecked, dude, I guess. Just utterly remorselessly bodying this guy, just completely destroying him. I've been summoning you in to help me with all of my fights. Is that seriously the best you have? I don't need to kill these things, but they gross me out. But yeah, like it's I, I I feel like I'm in this weird position because I really enjoy interpreting and I really enjoy going, huh, perhaps these things are like relational to one one another like this. Um but I also do get really frustrated by this this tendency to to act as if as if there is uh, an entire world with every granular at atomic detail that exists in some way that and that can be pulled out and and examined and rendered into a true and accurate picture of the entire world, I guess. Man, all this talk of Solaire just makes me want fucking ice cream. It's been so long since I had a Solero, as I sit here slowly melting. I haven't even been that warm today. I've just been sitting and fine and it's not been too hot, but this, it's night now and it's dark and I am dripping with sweat. This is awful, this sucks. Well, see, FromSoft does have a thematic preoccupation with cycles. There's a really strong, um, a really strong focus on on um, on the world ending and starting again. Yes, but on things cycling. Um, in particular, there's there's much more than just this endless chain of the world at beginning and ending. There is a very strong. There's a very strong um, set of themes that are to do with it. People's lives um, cycling. Um, the way people return to aspects of their lives that were previous and the way people are destroyed by these circularities and all these different other themes and stuff that go on. But, I mean, that's not because it's an Asian game. I think that's just because one of the directors has this weird preoccupation with cycles and circularity. Anyway, down there is the boss of this zone. We're not going to go do that just yet. There's a couple more items to pick up. And then there's a guy to either save or go find somewhere else and then come back and save. I find it so pleasing, the noise they make when they move around. Delightful. Ponkety tonkety, ponkety tonkety. Well, yeah, I mean, sometimes an author writes a character and they think, this is a cool character I've, I've, I've made. I like this guy. I'm going to put him in the next story I write, even though that's in a different, a completely different continuity, different world, different setting, completely separate work. It just happens to have a very similar guy in it. Um, and then people will, will read that and be like, ah, the same guy. These worlds are the same world. And it's not. It's just sometimes there's two guys. <laughs> sometimes there's two guys and they look the same. I don't know what to tell you. It's, um... Sometimes, sometimes not everything is connected. It's exactly the same, like, 
thing you get where people point to background details in movies and say, ah, this means this must be connected to this other other movie. And it's like, straight up, they just reused the prop. It doesn't mean anything necessarily. And I say that as someone who really enjoys interpreting and figuring out what stuff means and the true truths of narratives and so on. But I just, I need people to remember that that sometimes, sometimes the explanation is it fits the themes and sometimes the explanation is it's an allegory and sometimes it's a metaphor and so on and that there isn't a, a truth beyond that. There isn't... I think actually I've been I've been butchering this for like the last 10 minutes as I as I repeat myself but I think what it boils down to is this obsession with with specifically um physical logistics what people are for some reason over overly interested in are the physical logistics of a narrative you know how does how does this work as a phys as if it were a physical space, treating treating the themes of the narrative and the events that happen both as if they are physical events that have to relate in a physical way. Um, which, especially with something like Dark Souls, which is ha has explicitly as part of that logistical narrative the fact that, you know, the world itself is breaking down. But ugh, anyway. But yeah, so remember, in the, you know, those people who factor in, you know, Kingsfield and so on, like... I mean, if people are going to try and say that Sekiro takes place in the same continuity as Dark Souls, like, that's insane. Sekiro is explicitly set in a fantasy fairy tale version of a real historical period on Earth. Like, it's ridiculous. Like, you can have a character named Rickert in both games and it doesn't mean they're the same game. Also, that thing about um, actors is something I've heard as well, which I've always really enjoyed. Um, I've certainly always, I, I certainly always noticed that I think, um, I think that, um, oh god, this, here's my names problem again, I can't remember names, but the director of the, the Ghibli studio, that's another Miyazaki actually, isn't it? This, these games are directed by a different Miyazaki, but, um, in Miyazaki's films he, he has the same themes recurring and the same people interacting with them in the same way with this idea that the same kinds of people might exist but that doesn't mean they're all in the same world or this all different reincarnations of the same people bro don't do it bro it's a mistake bro come on don't do it So I talked about this previously, about his obsession with being a knight and protecting people and helping and fighting and all of this stuff. And the way that interacts with his inability to actually ever meaningfully help you. Did I manage? Did I do it? Did I save him this time? Talk to me, please. Nope, okay. So this, I believe, three ways this can go. Um, so, um, yeah, th this whole thing about circularity. Um, this recurring concept with um, with old Onion Knight Buddy, his, his whole deal is that all he believes is that he should be helping people, that he's this brave warrior who should be you know, helping. And he always says he's going to help you. He just needs to think for a minute. And then you solve the problem yourself. And then he watches you solve the problem that stumped him. And he thinks, next time, next time I'll do it. Next time I'll, I'll succeed. And then he doesn't. And you help him out again, 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 again. Every time he thinks he's going to help someone and instead he himself needs help. That's the core of his character arc. And here, at this point, he's so caught up in these ideals and his inability to fulfill his sort of end of those ideals that he decides he needs to fight these things for your benefit like they're in the hole 
Um, yeah, I guess if you... See, I was confused about this on my last playthrough of this game, and I made this terrible mistake. There's three ways this can go. Um, if you drop down here, and he dies in the fight, um, he just drops his item. If you drop down here, and he finishes with more than 50% health, you get that final conversation with him. Um, and if you kill them all before you drop down here, he just goes home. But what I'm not sure is how you get the how you get the um, meeting with his daughter, because it might is it just is it just that when he goes home that happens? Because um, one of the ways that this that this story can end is that he he reunites with his daughter who's been looking for him at the Ash Lake, and we can go there and see them, and they will talk to each other and. They just have a conversation about how he needs to give up on his dream and go home. Like, your family needs you, you aren't actually helping anyone, and he eventually just accepts it. And how ultimately, <laughs> ultimately, the only real way out for any of us is to accept that our people need us sometimes, our families need us, our friends need us, or whatever. But imposing help upon people who didn't ask for it isn't necessarily going to be beneficial for anyone, least of all you. And I just think it's so tragic. There's a kind of a beautiful tragedy to the, the, the heroic knightly character fruitlessly throwing himself into a fight he doesn't need um, to to fight because he's so desperate and it's so important to him that he finally, finally prove his right to exist. That he finally achieve whatever the fuck it is he's trying to do. <laughs> and that's why it's so tragic because he still ultimately fails. Anyway, um, alas, poor Onion Knight, we stand our legend. So as you can see, we do actually have enough souls to get that final level up. We won't need it for this boss fight, but we're going to do it anyway. Uh, once I grab the last item down here. because it will be time for one of the easiest bosses in the game, for all that my friends seem to have difficulty with it. Casting no aspersions on, on, on their capacities to play this game. Uh, is this the way out, or did I go the wrong way? One of these wiggly paths will take us back up, but um, since I want to rest at the bonfire to level up anyway, let's just use a home, homeward bone to get back out. By the way, if anyone watching uh, doesn't know... I've, hang on, I've already said that. I've already said that this stream. But then people come and go throughout the stream. Yeah, so it is the 50% thing. That's exactly what I thought. The real difficulty with that is that basically the fall alone will knock most of his health off. So um, you have to destroy the monsters very, very, very quickly, and then talk to him before he takes too much poison damage as well, which I clearly failed to do. But I'm glad to know I was right, and that that is the only way to get him to appear at Ash Lake and just go the fuck home. <laughs> but yeah, so um, if anyone's watching who wasn't earlier and doesn't know, I make uh, Let's Plays on YouTube, you should go check them out. They're extremely good and in-depth, and people seem to like them. Um, also, I stream three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 7pm UK time. And, uh, yeah. That's my deal. That's what I do. Um, I appreciate all follows and I- Oh, fuck! <laughs> oh, I forgot I took the ring off. Oh, I suppose, yeah, he dies in Ash Lake, but, I mean, that's how you get the, the slab, which is good. Well, the best ending is to kill the demons because that keeps him alive. It's not necessarily the best ending for him. Perhaps um, perhaps that tragic death is what he's really been seeking this whole time. Perhaps he wants to... Um, perhaps that's what's important to him, you know? Perhaps we shouldn't be deciding for him that uh, maintaining his life is, is more important. I'm being facetious, of course, to some extent, because, like, you know, you're still saving his life ultimately, and that's important. Regardless whether he wants his life saved or not. So I do personally think that is the best ending, but it is not necessarily the most thematically interesting ending. And I do like the conversation he has with his daughter. I'd really love to catch it on, on camera sometime. 
anyway, yeah, I, uh, all of that stuff I said about my streams and stuff. Also, um, please recommend me to people. I really appreciate it. Any, any recom any time someone, you know, retweets my, my episodes or reblogs them or just tells people that my channel is cool and they should check it out, both the YouTube and the Twitch, uh, it means so much to me. It's, it, like, I really, really straight up get a huge, uh, hit of dopamine whenever I gain a subscriber or follower or whatever that, whatever other things there are. Anyway, that's enough um, mercenary logistics, I guess. Oh, does he go hollow and his daughter has to kill him? Yeah, see, that's tragic. I love that. I love a good tragedy. Him going hollow and his daughter, his daughter having to kill him and then just continuing this cycle of knights errant is just fascinating to me. So, this boss is... The bed of chaos. Everyone thinks it's incredibly difficult. It's really not. Once you, it is a puzzle boss, and once you know what you're doing, you should be able to do it instantaneously. Um, so, having said that, I will, I'm sure, die 15 times. But let's let's go do it. I'm going to be quiet because of the focus reason. But um, this should not be too difficult. I always get the Sonic the Hedgehog music from the Sonic Adventure game when you're doing the when you're snowboarding through a city. I guess. So the objective is to um, smash two thingamajigs, which will let you get to the target that you're actually trying to catch. And as you do this, various bits of the, the level will break and collapse. But um, it really is just get to position A, hit position A, get to position B, hit position B, get to position C, hit position C, and that's it. There's no real actual boss fight, it's just this, this puzzle thing. Wow, get wrecked me, I guess. One of the real dangers is that um, it just sweeps you into one of the holes that collapse, <laughs> so you have to be careful. exactly those sweeps. This is kind of RNG dependent. Um, as far as- oh, there we go. As far as I know, the sweep attacks are, are randomized. All of its attacks just kind of happen at random. I don't think you can provoke specific attacks with specific behavior the way you can with some bosses, uh, which is unfortunate because it does mean that... Do you know, for a second I thought I sprinted straight into the lava again without the ring on. Yeah, that's actually really fair. Um... I know that speedrunners have just learned the exact angles at which you can, like, thread the needle and shoot an arrow into each of the... each of the two targets from your starting position, which is fucking amazing, but I'm not going to try and pull that off right now. Don't mind me, folks. You can just go back to whatever the fuck it was you were doing. Standing and staring at each other? Cool, 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 cool. Hovering mindlessly, like some kind of drone forever. Cool, I love to do that. You guys, uh, you guys seen the latest Hovering Mindlessly Monthly? Yeah, it's just blank pages. I don't even need to fight this one, I can just go. Bye. <laughs> My favourite dumb trick to do with those things, incidentally, is that if you run up the staircase, I think you can run and jump and drop into their, their buckets on the top. <laughs> Which just um, play immediately plays the animation that would be playing if you had um, been picked up and put in there by its tentacles. I don't know if it's better to go left or right first. I don't know if it makes a difference, but I always for some reason go left and then right. Oh look, it doesn't uh, collapse again. Oh, that's right, it stays done. It's been so long since I didn't beat this boss on the first try that I completely forgot that 
the bits you've done stay done and you don't need to repeat them. Huh. Well, I guess you learned something new that you knew years ago again every day, huh? You may notice that this boss, fittingly, has the same kind of weird, greebly, tentacly aesthetic that, that the demons have, but um, it is it is the bed of chaos from which the demons sprang, which is, of course, a thematic statement rather than a literal one. It is the existence of the bed of chaos that has caused demons to begin to exist. I don't believe they literally spring forth from the bed of chaos, although perhaps someone has made that argument somewhere in a lore video, I don't know. But I, I straight up forgot that that stays, whatever happens here stays happened. It's the only boss that has bits that stay happened. Anyway, I think we will we will wipe this guy out and then uh, that'll be it for today. I don't know how many tries it'll take me, but that should be... Uh, oh, I'm stuck. Please help. Foot trapped. Not that kind of help, thank you. But yeah, so the Bed of Chaos, um, all of the kind of roots and things around here are, aren't um, a part of it. Oh, sorry, no, they, they, are, they are a part of it. I like to think that a lot of the roots we see in Isolith are some, are some of these weird outcroppings of the Bed of Chaos. Um, some people think that they are the roots of arch trees, which have grown down and cracked through all of these spaces. But honestly, I, I kind of believe that the arch trees themselves don't really have a capacity to grow. Down the hole we go again. One of the benefits of doing the Let's Plays, I mean, aside from all of the other bonuses you get from editing, is that I can cut out every failure. Which isn't normally an issue, but when you have these kind of, like, RNG will you get slapped into the hole again issues, then it, it does help a lot. But yeah, so um, one thing I have noticed is that unlike a lot of the other weird, overgrown, mutant, life-corrupted entities in this game world, the Bed of Chaos actually reminds me a lot of the sort of weird... Um, scrabbly, gloopy kind of body horror that you get in um, in other Japanese games. It, it reminds me very strongly of um, Resident Evil. Especially the uh, Resident Evil 4. There's a lot of these kind of like weird wood-like twiggy things poking out of people. Alright, attempt number, what, six? Oh wow. I died, so I died so quickly in this one that it left my blood stain up here. That's surprising. I'd have thought that at least the lift alone was long enough to put my blood stain at the bottom. Yeah, if I escape from the city, that's literally exactly the song I was thinking about that I mentioned a minute ago. Rolling around at the speed of sound. Got places to go, gotta follow my rainbow, etc. I can't sing because I've been talking for an hour and a half. Please, please, not the hole again. Please, I beg, I beg you, kind sir. Successfully not the hold again. But yeah, so this big scrabbly guy, this Cthulhu looking motherfucker up top isn't actually the bed of chaos itself. I personally believe that this is the Flame of Chaos, which is the horrible thing accidentally created by trying to make a new flame out of um, the spark of life that was found. One of the four... Ooh. Yowza. So yeah, in the third phase, <laughs> it starts being able to do that, which is actually a pyromancy you can pick up um, and cast for yourself, which is great fun in PvP, I'll tell you what. 
So having unlocked the two sides, we can now sprint straight down the middle and we should be able to get by without too much trouble and then you just dive underneath and kill it. Which will be good because I have a hell of a headache. I need to get a fan or a portable AC unit or something. Incidentally, since I've mentioned it a couple times, I do have a couple of new Let's Plays in the works. I'm going to go back and finish my Dishonored Let's Play soon-ish, but to shake the rust off, I'm currently working on a Let's Play of a very, very complicated multiplayer game called Dominions 5, which is a extremely detailed, extremely granular, um, like, grand strategy game, I guess. But I'm also working on a Let's Play of Myst, the uh, classic point-and-click adventure, which I think is really interesting for a few reasons. I'm not saying this because I've run out of shit to talk about in Isolith because I keep getting put in the hole again. But, um, no, I absolutely am. By the way, that is the dome that we saw previously. When we first went into the demon ruins, I pointed out that dome. We are under that dome, and that ceiling is the underside of it. You get bonus points for how many routes you can headbutt on your way down. Alright, let's see if we can... See if we can get in this time. You sprint directly towards... He slapped me out of the air! So if you sprint directly towards him, you drop onto that branch on the right-hand side of the screen right now, and you can just march right up to him and kill him. But... Ugh, tragedy. Once again, the real enemy in Dark Souls is hubris. You know, the major- one, actually hubris is one of the major themes of this game, which is interesting. Except that unlike the classical conception of hubris, which is that, um, which is that of a, a mortal person um, likening themselves to the gods, you know, claiming to have the power equal to that of the gods, or approaching that of the gods, and therefore being slapped down by fate, which would be a good name for a- good name for like a- an album, I think. But um, the the hubris in Dark Souls is is tied specifically to the gods themselves. It is Gwyn's hubris that he can prevent the Age of Flame dying that has wrought all these terrible horrors existing. It is the Witch of Isolith's hubris that she could the, she could do the same thing even, which is not really delved into because this game is kind of all about Gwyn and Gwyn's brood and their bullshit. But um, she did the same thing first. She tried to prolong the Age of Fire by... Unlike un, unlike uh, Gwyn's attempt to link fires, she create, tried to create a new fire, and um, all this horrible stuff happened. There is this consistent theme of tampering with the natural order resulting in horrors. And... Um, well, it's just hubristic, I guess. But it's interesting that it's, it's tied to the people who have um, great temporal power doing that, rather than the kind of... We should be all... We should be alright if I can just get down there. I do think this is probably the most unfair boss in the game, because it basically comes down to RNG, and... Um, I realise the irony of saying this after at the start, I was like, oh, this will be fine, it'll be easy, we'll do it the first try, everyone says it's difficult, it's not... I would argue that actually it is not difficult, regardless of the fact that I'm dying over and over again. It's not difficult, it's just that it's completely random chance. Um, it, it, when you know what you need to do, there is no real difficulty. There's just, is he going to stun lock you and kill you with the stun lock? I think for difficulty to be difficulty, it has to matter. There has to be some element of challenge to it. Um, I.e. it has to be kind of... Like, your decisions have to make some kind of impact on whether you'll succeed. I super sound like I'm coming up with excuses for why I'm stuck, huh? My hands have got so sweaty that I can barely hold the controller. Oh boy, oh boy. I'm, I'm so warm that I can't even swear properly. But 
But anyway, when, when we eventually finally get to the... Hmm? What's worrying? The, to the warmth? I mean, there's not really anything I can do about it. That might not be dodgeable as well. Ugh. I'm pretty sure even if you time the iframes, the slap still hits. Or do you mean you worried I might have a fever and therefore have COVID round three, which... I hope isn't the case. I'm pretty sure it's just that it's been 25 degrees today. And it's now heavy and humid rather than the nice breezy day that it was during the actual daytime. Well, that's the same here. It's just that Aberdeen tends to have um, quite cool summers and then very hot Septembers. Um, that's what I've noticed most years, the past few years. You know, in August we were having like 10 degree days, like capping out at kind of like 15 degrees. So... Gotta make sure you get the completely pointless retrieval for style points. I do not approve of the slappies. Oh, you've got to be joking. I mean, you can yell in Sicilian if you want, but you were just saying the other day that um, you've lost all of your heat resistance and now a 25 degree day here is disastrous for you. The slapping tree is the boss of this underground zone. It's a puzzle boss, which requires us to hit two specific targets, which we've already done, which unlocks the third target, which takes basically one hit to kill. Um, no, darling, the correct term is I'm sweating bullets. I know you're new to our language, but... This is a fun running joke we have in my household where I bully my flatmate. Oh, I mean, my aim was definitely off with the um, with the drop down here. It's just this is the first time I've ever actually reached the the drop down bit. Um, every other time he's he's slapped me to death before I could get there. But the angry slappy tree is uh, the result of what happens when you try to use the metaphysical concept of life to kind of prolong the life of the universe itself by reigniting the flame of existence, but you know, it's only one quarter of existence, so it didn't really work, and instead birthed monsters. Let's see if I can try and get like a like a 1080 kickflip off the end of this. Ah, complete failure. I should stream some Tony Hawks or something, I think. So I have to get close enough that he- that triggers the slapping attack in the first place. And if the first slapping attack hits me, it knocks me down and stuns me. And if the se and if I'm knocked down and stunned, the timing before- between that and the second attack means that I stand up exactly in time to get hit again, and there's not really anything I can do about that. Uh, which means that then if the third thing hits me, I just die. 
This is tiresome. I can see why everyone hates this boss so much. What the fuck did I do last time that I got through on, through on first try? I really don't know what I'm doing wrong. If anyone has advice, now is the time to be yelling it at the screen in frustration as you watch me die for the 15th time. Well, I can go back to trying to dodge. I can block one hit, um, but the second one uh, will always knock me down because I don't have enough stamina to block two hits from a giant angry slapping tree. Dark Souls has a decent stock in trade in horrible, awful trees that I hate. There's definitely one in Dark Souls 3 as well, although that, although that tree is a lot easier to fight. And that tree's a puzzle boss as well, actually. I mean, yeah, I don't usually bother to block boss hits, because most of them don't really work very well, but if I can block a hit, I probably should. Alright then, what happens if I break left instead of right? Let's see what happens. Well, I'm starting to get frustrated. If I have to end this stream without killing this guy, I'm going to be furious. <laughs> I might straight up edit a bunch of these attempts out. Although, I think I've been talking for most of them, so. Oh, who am I kidding? I can't be bothered. I can barely be bothered to edit my normal. Actually, no, I, I put a lot of time and effort into editing my episodes. I just don't do that for the streams because they're hours long. I suppose, I suppose this is kind of the um, get fucked if you're a sorcerer boss. If you're wearing heavy enough armor, you can you can withstand the hits more easily. Sorcerer has an easier time with almost every boss in the game, as you may have noticed. We've beaten a bunch of them first try, um, and many of them are on you know second or third try, because our damage output is so high. But the puzzle boss doesn't care about our damage output. All it cares about is our ability to not be slapped. Let's try going down backwards. Let's see if that makes a difference. <gasps> it's not allowed. Backwards sliding is 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 forbidden. I didn't I didn't know that there was this kind of fascism in the game. Who says who says I can't slide backwards down there? This is like when you go to the water park and they're like, oh, you have to slide down the slide with your like arms in front and crossed. Straight up, does anyone have tips? <laughs> oh, my credibility's in the toilet. You know, if anyone's got like a type 5, now's your time. This could be your big break, you know. Do a little bit of comedy routine for the eight other people watching. Or I guess seven other people watching. Wait, no, I'm one of them. Eight other people watching. Fantastic. So otherwise, it's going to be a matter of whether or not I get put in the hole again. Airplane food? What could you possibly have to tell me about airplane food? Yeah, I mean, I could go into a rant here about the um, eternal horribleness of capitalism and the... Um, the switch over over the past like 60 years or so the the constant uh 
recontextualization of the idea of providing a service which can earn you a profit to earning a profit at any means necessary, regardless of the service, and how this has resulted in so much of this bullshit, um, and so much, like, just, you know, you don't get a meal on a plane anymore, even if it's, like, a really long flight. You don't get, uh, you don't get the things you used to get anymore, not to sound old as hell, but, um, the constant, you know, the fact that planes that were designed to have X many people on them now are flying with t literally twice that many people on them because they they <laughs> they cut the seat sizes in half and replaced all the seats with from, from two to three seats in the aisles and it just oh god almighty it's the same impulse that is it is the same impulse that yeah you have to pay extra for carry on and you have to pay extra for cabin luggage um but it's the same impulse that is reflected in every single industry the world over now there has been a a massive looting of the world both through, you know, abusive employees and through just constantly offering worse and worse services. Every single service that exists has been consistently downgraded um, over the past several decades as people have realized, hey, if we all fuck over the consumer, then they have no choice but to just, ex you know, bend over and accept it. So, um, you know, join the IWW, I guess, regardless of what job you, job you have. Or alternatively, um, you know, send me some advice on, on how to drag an oil CEO out of his mansion and beat him to death with a stick. I do live in an oil town, so that's that's actually an option if you can if you can give me a bit of advice, someone. By the way, Mr. FBI man listening to this, that is a joke. So he did another of the flame attacks first this time, so I guess it is randomised. Oh yeah, no, they make billions and then they claim that they make nothing. If you look at Uber's profits, it's been running at like, uh, like a multi-billion year loss. Um, and yet somehow it's still making vast amounts of money for its shareholders, you know? There's so many horrible tricks that they use. No, nope, I'm sorry, I'm not interested. No, I'm fi I'm perfectly happy with my current email provider. No, nope, excuse me, sorry, can I get past? No, I don't want to donate to Greenpeace. No, I'm also happy with my phone provider. Thank you, sorry, excuse me, can I get past? You're in the way of the shopping centre. Jules, is it weird being able to hear me talk in this room and then like a minute later hear me talk the same thing on the stream? I was going to say this was never an issue previously, but I don't think I actually streamed at all before she moved in with us. I already sponsor a child, it's called being a deadbeat dad. Yeah, you spend so much time trying to get to work past all these people, then you finally get to work and he just slaps you, boss just kind of slaps you to death. <gasps> Fucking hell, did I do it? Yes, go on, get in. Lick my sweaty ass crack. I have finally done it. Oh my god. Get wrecked, you horrible bug. I can't hit the bastard. There we go. Shit, yeah, I did. 22,000 ratings on this one. I'll join in, why not? So the slapper has become the slappy. 6 Semper Tyrannosaurus. It's not that I had to keep running, it's that um, straight up his animation, he, like he didn't start the attack as soon this time. Like I've been watching carefully every time I've done this so far. Um, 
I did try sprinting straight forwards a few times and it he, he the slappies caught me. Um, it just d didn't play the animation as soon this time. Anyway, let's put some points in some places. That's, oh, hang on, we have enough intelligence now. We didn't need to put another one in intelligence, I could have put that somewhere else, oh well. Which means, finally, at long last, Crystal Soul Spear, the most powerful, commonly used spell in the game. Anyway, so, let's, let's go home. Let's stagger up out of this horrible underground place and, and go, go rest at the Firelink Shrine. As that gentle harp theme begins to play in the background. As we wander through the hub to which we return. So, having finally completed Isolith, that means we now have the item dropped by Solaire, which will be very useful for where we're going to go next. Which is... where the fuck has it gone? Do I not have it? What the fuck? Did he not drop it? Did I not pick it up? Is it still down there? Fucking hell. Oh, you must be joking. The whole reason I did this boss in this order was so that I could go, um... Is there not a- and there's, there's no bonfire warp in Isolith? Are you kidding me? Oh, that sucks ass. I hate this. Well, shit. Okay, then. Maybe we'll do the DLC first so I can get the light spell. Fucking hell. Jesus Christ almighty. I'm so angry I'm gonna go explode a skeleton out of spite. Anyway, uh, yeah, so Solaire, uh, after being despair-filled at the fact that he didn't have, that he couldn't find his, his son, S-U-N, he, uh, decided to put a bug on his head because the bug was shiny. And so he talks about having finally found it and he's destroyed by this horrible parasitic infection, which I think we can all empathize with. Huh, only 276 damage. That's surprisingly low. Are these guys magic resistant? I'd have thought my normal soul spit. My normal soul spit has been doing like 400 to low level enemies. That's kind of surprising. Wake up, you stupid bastard. Hmm, okay, well, I'm not sure what to do about that. If I go back down there, I might be able to go get it, but I'm not going to do that on stream because it's tedious. Alternatively, there is, um,. There is a chest in this main room behind Frampt, which, as you can see, is open currently. If you miss, if you lose a key item, it respawns in that chest, but I don't believe this counts as a key item, which is frustrating. So, yeah, uh, when you wear that, it sheds light around you in a radius, which is, is useful for not falling off things in pitch dark, which is, well, we're going to be going to a pitch dark place left uh, soon, so... Anyway, before my voice breaks entirely, I'm going to say goodnight, and that's going to be all from me to, for today. If anyone's watching who doesn't already know, check out my YouTube channel. There's in-depth, well-made Let's Plays on there. I stream three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And uh, if you want to, you can support me on Patreon or Ko-fi. I really appreciate every penny. And most importantly, if you want to, you can uh, share my channel or my videos or whatever with other people. That's... Growing my audience genuinely makes me happier. Or just tell your friends, I guess. You know, if you have friends. What kind of loser has friends? Anyway, that is all from me. Thank you so much for watching. It's been a delight, except for all the times when it wasn't. Um, I'll see you later. Goodbye. <laughs>